to episode 87. I don't even know if I typed that right. Um, the Cat Lady Podcast. I am kind of out of it. I am getting over a cold, so if I have to stop and sneeze or if I just seem a little loopy, that's, that's why. So, but it's been too long. It's been like two weeks since I recorded. Three weeks, maybe? I don't know, right before Christmas. It was a week before Christmas, yeah, because it was like one week away from Christmas, so it's been two and a half weeks. I don't know. It's, it's been a daze. So, and I forgot to print out my notes, so I'm going to be squinting and looking at my phone. But anyways, it's December. No, it's not December. <laughs> I wrote my notes in December, apparently. Or I just didn't change it. Anyway, sorry. It is January 7th, 2019. It's going to be uh, tricky to get used to saying 2019. Hope everyone had a wonderful holiday. Happy New Year to everybody. And it's uh, good to be back into a routine. Today was the kid's first day back to school, so it's just time to get back into the the normal everyday stuff so anyways it is in the middle of the afternoon on a cold windy day in Michigan uh, I did my adulting of, for the day went shopping at Costco this morning and yeah I'm just kind of spent um, thank you for coming to check me out if you want to see what I'm up to when I'm not podcasting please follow me on Instagram as the cat lady I don't even know if I said who I was I'm the cat lady c-a-t-t -T, craft all the things uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, the Cat Lady Podcast Group, and also the Ravelry Group, where all the show notes will be, uh, Ravelry, I am the Cat Lady, and I am Crafty Cat Lady on YouTube. Please subscribe and like if you uh, like what you see. Thank you to my returning viewers, of course. I am always thankful to have you back and to have conversations with all my uh, crafty friends. And if you're new and uh, just checking me out for the first time, thank you and uh, welcome. So, podcast news. Oh, big podcast news. So, uh, over Christmas, we had the Craft Along. Uh, craft Along. <laughs> so, basically, any holiday decor or gifts or anything you were making, uh, you could enter it in to win a project bag, a DPM Cozy, and two skeins, two 50-gram skeins of yarn. So, I draw, drew a winner today as I was typing in my show notes. I asked the Echo Dot Alexa, pick a number, 2 through 58. We had, 50, yeah, we had 58 posts and I, it, Alexa chose post three which I got excited after I saw it because the when I will post a picture of the uh, winning uh, post but it was sandwich stitches who is Samantha uh, so congratulations and it was uh, this really amazing Star Wars blanket so again I will post the picture uh, so if you are watching, please send me your address and uh, I will send you out your prize. So thanks for playing along. Uh, she had quite a few entries in there as well as uh, a lot of other people. So I was very excited with the turnout. Thank you everyone for who participated. Uh, hopefully I'll do another knit along, craft along, something along soon because it was fun and I enjoyed the participation. I knew that one would be a good one just because uh, all, everyone's doing holiday stuff so that was fun it was nice to see uh, what everyone was making and I was making things too so it was cool to just make along with everyone so thank you for that and no other podcast news really no not much going on so just continuing to uh, keep up with the podcast which uh, I'm happy to be back in the game it's it's been going pretty well so thank you on to knitting uh, finished objects. I have my scrappy yarn blanket, so I was doing the blanket squares for Advent, and I did them all the way through December 28th because I wanted to finish adding a whole section to my blanket. So instead of just adding the rows as I was doing upwards, I added a whole chunk off to the side to make it a little wider. Uh, we are considering a king size bed in the future, so by the time this thing is done, I guarantee we will have a king size bed. So uh, let's see where I left off. I'm pretty sure I left off. So let's see. These are squares 19 through 28. So I have my little thing here. So we'll try to just kind of, so where that little doohickey stitch marker is, that was probably 19, 20, 21. We come down to the bottom. And most of these, I don't really know what they are, but this one I know it's from Rhinebeck. It's a uh, fiber nymph. Dye Works. It was her special Rhinebeck uh, colorway that she was handing out while we were at the Mahodcaster meetup. So and we got that one. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. This one I think is a fiber stash. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't remember which one anymore. But some green one. This one is a fiber stash as well. 
this one might, I think the last three are actually fiber stashed too. So this one was a pretty pink one, that dark gray one, and then we got, this one was called Great Scott, I know that, pretty certain. Uh, so yeah, so that was, uh, so there we go. So it's too wide obviously for the camera, but I finished it. I have intentions of adding more to it before next Christmas. <laughs> uh, I have a bunch of minis that I wound and are ready to go, but I just, I don't know, I feel like I've needed a little bit of a break from it because, you know, 28, 28 days straight of this, I don't know, you know, I need, I need some variety, even though it is just a square day. Take this out. But yeah, I have my minis in my little basket here, wound and ready to go, so yeah, maybe I'll do one later. It might be a, might be a project to work on, so. That is finished object number one. Finished object, no oh shoot. I was gonna wear my flax, but I will go grab my flax to show you, be right back. Okay, finished object number two is my flax sweater by Tin Can Knits, and I got this done on the Friday before Christmas. My goal was to have it to wear for Christmas Eve, so I got to wear it for Christmas Eve, so here it is. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw pictures, but yeah, it's a nice, it's nice, it's a nice and fitted. Um, to be honest, I prefer the neck for the more open neckline of the seclude I've made. Uh, maybe I just prefer, I think I prefer when they, you start and you cast on the back and then you cast, you join in a little bit lower or a little bit, uh, you build up the back and so that the, the neckline is a little lower in front. Cause I feel like it was, not that it was choking me, I just felt like it was like up, to, up there. But I kinda, after I washed it a couple times, I've already washed it twice, uh, it seemed to have uh, relaxed a little bit. This is Nitpicks Brava in the Hunter colorway. It's, you know, soft acrylic. It's uh, you know, exp uh, inexpensive and, you know, washable. I did steam it a little bit to block it, to uh, stretch out the sleeves just a tad because when I when I was trying it on and going at, as I go, I felt like the sleeves, I wanted the sleeves a little long, but then when I wore it, I felt like they kept kind of bunching up. So, I mean, that was partially the, the uh, garter garter panel in there so so I got I busted out a steamer and steamed it out a little bit and that seat and then washed it again and that seemed to do the trick so so yeah I don't know if I, I don't think I'd make another flax um, but I and now I know that I prefer to get those necklines that you cast on the back first and then and then uh, work that back and forth and then join it around a little later uh, the brick which I had originally started in this uh, pattern yarn uh, and then frog it because it was too big. Uh, does that, so maybe I will reconsider the brick. I, I have a whole pile of other sweaters I want to work on, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how those other uh, sweaters are constructed, I guess. So there. But I was very excited to have that done, and I got to wear it for Christmas, so that was, uh, that was a success. Success. The next one is a surprise whip. Oh, uh, no, it's not a whip. Oh, these are, no, these are finished up, sorry. Um, the next one is a surprise finished objects because you never saw it as a whip because this was my, well, unless you follow me on Instagram, this was my New Year's Eve cast on and this is a special cast on because this is a twinsy project, which if you are a follower, you know what my twinsy projects are. I have a friend, uh, Jen, who is also Storm Coast, who was the former podcaster, the uncreative crafter, and me and her have done eight twinsy projects, so this would be the eighth. So we've done socks and we've done shawls and socks and shawls. I think that's it. I had a, I had it all out, but I think we've only done socks and shawls. And typically we use the same yarns, not necessarily the same colors, but well, most of the time they, they have been the same colors and same patterns. So we've done like exploration stations, uh, different different yarns for that one. But we've done matching socks, which we've done the same colors, color yarn, and same pattern, vanilla. And I uh, don't know one of them was patterned. We did blueberry waffles or something like that. Or I can't remember what it was called, but it was like blueberry waffles. Uh, and then so in this one we decided a New Year's Eve cast on. We bought the uh, Rhinebeck colorway of Miss Babs yarn this past Rhinebeck. And so we thought, okay, we'll do a twinsie, same yarn, same pattern, New Year's Eve cast on. So we both cast on and I got sick and literally spent mm, 
four or five days sitting on my couch in my pajamas knitting so i finish it and it's not blocked so it looks kind of funky but this is the reina shawl but oh my gosh look the the camera is totally blowing out the color but yeah um if you look on instagram you can see kind of the true color of it but it's a shawlette uh it's gonna block out a bit after i, I know for sure that lace is gonna open up pretty wide um there's a free pattern on Ravelry, can't remember the nor or something. Let's see. My, let's see. Nor Lai Vola. Sorry, I'm terrible with names. But again, free on Ravelry, very popular pattern on Ravelry, one skein. I actually stopped, I skipped, I didn't do the final repeat on the bottom and I should have because I would have had enough. I have 10 grams about left, which, uh, but I was getting nervous. You know, you get in the thick of it, you get down to then, you really don't want to run out of yarn. So, I mean, I got enough for a mini for my blanket, at least. And, and then some, enough for two minis. But, uh, yeah, so I'm excited to block this out. I'll probably block this out this afternoon. If I remember, I will show it off again. But, you know, it's a decent, it's a decent uh, size unblocked. Obviously, I'd like the ends to be a little bit longer, so I'm sure it will be once I block it. Uh, and it'll be less curly. But this is a gorgeous yarn. I mean, it look, it knits up much beautiful, more beautiful than it actually looked in the skein. I mean, I liked it in the skein, but it's like super, super pretty. It's really more royal, darker than it's showing on the screen. But <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so that was uh, a whip you never saw is a whip that is now finished. So I started on New Year's Eve. I finished it. Friday? Friday or Saturday? Maybe Saturday. Um, so yeah. Oh yeah, I think it was, maybe it was Sunday. Maybe it was yesterday. I had finished it yesterday. So it was from New Year's Eve till Sunday. Okay, moving along. Let's see. Those are all my finished objects. So, whips. Knitting whips. I have gym socks which has been uh, such a debacle this is the third time i've cast these on i did the i started cast one on like in august it was too big like it just it was too big and I, and I don't think i wrote down how many stitches i did so i don't know what i did so i'm hoping i'm not repeating the same exact thing but then i did it again and it was something with it i thought maybe so i did it again and i made a narrow narrower toe because usually when i cast on his toe i cast on like 40 stitches so I cast on like 30 or something, 32, to make it a little narrow. Well, and then I increased to 64 because that's what I think is the proper count. And this is Patton's Croy, so it's a little bit thicker. I'm using size ones. So I made, I got my five or six inches of the foot knit, tried it on, and it just, there was this weird, just like the part where, where it increased, it was like just, there was this like little flappy, spot on his foot so where it didn't sit right like I thought maybe okay maybe the toe was too narrow I'm not really sure so now I cast on an extra wide toe so I cast on 44 increased to 64 so literally I just have my toe again so it's a very wide he's got a wider foot I mean, he's, he's got an average foot it's not super wide it's not anything he wears a ten and a half it's not like anything so I don't know why I'm having a hard time. I've knit him socks before. I've followed the numbers that I did before, but I've done so many variations of different types of yarn, different needle sizes. So I'm just trying to come up with a set kind of stitch numbers and needles. I would ideally like to just use ones and cast on something, increase to something. And I just, I need to know this formula and I'm having a hard time. So. He tried it on yesterday, but it's too small. It's really too small to really know. So I need to get a couple inches in, have him slip it on, and see if it works. So, but it's getting a little frustrating. And he feels bad every time I have to pull it out. And I don't want him to feel bad because it's not his fault. And I want to be able to make him socks, but I just, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time. I still have a hard time with my own feet. So, I mean, knitting socks for other people is not always easy. Uh, this is Patton's Croy Effects, I think. Just pretty standard. And that's living in my Japanese knot bag. This was my Christmas kitty's bag. Probably should rotate it out since it's not Christmas anymore. Well, it's more of just winter, winter kitties. I guess it's really not Christmas, but this was from the Tangled Skein CA. 
it's in Canada, so. That is that. Uh, my phone keeps going to sleep. All right. So scrap yarn blanket is always a work in progress. Got my minis wound in my little basket here. So on to spinning. I have some spinning done. And so in my R2D2 Chasing Acorns bag, C3PO, is my odds and ends with my Snyder spindle, Turkish spindle. And I finally finished the mini that I had on there. Got them for a while. So this is very pretty. Mm, I got the focusing thing again. Hello. Oh, focus on this. You got it? Hello. Maybe. There it goes. So this one's pretty pink, yellow, orangey goodness. <clears throat> um... I haven't started a new one, so just I was, just wanted to get that one off the spindle. I kind of had my goal over the break, over the holiday break, was to kind of finish my incompleted spin spin projects. <coughs> so I finished my wheel spin as well. Thank goodness, because that was on there since August. The end of August is when I started it. Uh, this is a merino silk blend from Fiber Optic. It's a gradient that was called Copper to Verdigris. So it was a orangey color to green uh, to a very dark green with like some black and the burgundy in the in between so uh, let's see if you can focus on that and this turned out stunning it's again the, the lighting isn't the best in here but um if you look on instagram i got pictures of like uh, the of the of what the gradient looks like so but I did not count this yet. It is a it is a fingering weight. A little thicker spots in there, it looks like, but mostly fingering weight. I will probably make a shawl. I love making the gradient shawls. And that probably will be in rotation pretty soon. Because I tend to not sit on these as skeins for too long before I knit them up. Because they are my favorite. And it's nice and squishy and soft. So very pleased with it. Uh, it took me forever. And, but now I need a new wheel project, so no whips are current, but soon I will throw something on the wheel. I'd really like to make a, like a bulky two-ply. This was a chain ply, which is a three-ply. So I spun the single super duper thin to chain ply it into a fingering weight, so that's why I took forever. Um, <clears throat> but I'd like to get something, uh, I'm, I'm just not good at spinning anything but thin. <laughs> Because that's just what I'm used to now. Um, so I, it's going to take a lot of control and uh, like thought. It's not going to be like as mindless as I'd like it to be, I guess. Um, pardon me, I'm going to take a drink of water. My throat's getting scratchy. So I, I know I have some fiber that I, won't, I wouldn't mind practicing with. Because it'll probably turn out kind of artsy. Less... <clears throat> less uh smooth as i'd like it just because that's gonna be practicing so uh so yeah that's all my spinning so i want to work on i'll probably throw another odds and ends onto the spindle soon uh upcoming sewing project in the works uh i have not started anything but i did pick up the fabric so it's kind of a work in progress but i'd like to i'm planning on making a dpn needle case. So this is from Show and Tell Meg, which is, was a website. Uh, so I will put the link in my show notes if anyone's interested, but it's, uh, basically, let's see if I can find a better picture. So basically it's just a case that holds your uh, DPNs, let's see, because I just have DPNs just like all over the place. Uh, no, I don't have a good picture of it. That's pretty much the best picture of it, but basically it's a case. And then you open it up and it's got a bunch of little pockets and then it's black and white so you can't see but they're all numbered they have one through zero through uh 15 number down there and they're all individually sized so that they supposedly will fit the uh needles so i'm going to attempt that and my fabric choices so far are i might reconsider one of them this one's gonna be the outside though for sure this is my uh like old school legend of zelda stuff <laughs> so this will be the outside which i think would be awesome and then you know there's not a lot of color in there it's very beige but there's a little green and gold in there so i thought this one would be make a good inside it's kind of a burgundy with like swirls 
So, I don't know, I think the two of them go together just fine. Stop trying to find my face! <laughs> and then you need a, you supposedly, I guess I don't really don't need a contrasting color on the, I could do the Zelda on the inside too, actually, but I think um, they, they asked, the pattern calls for three different fabrics. I don't have enough of this, but I thought this was a good color to go with it. It was kind of more of a solid bur burgundy, it's like got leaves on it. Um, but I might go to Joann's and pick up a fat quarter, because uh, this isn't enough. This is enough to get two pieces. I need four, but then I was going to do the inside. I was just going to use this, because basically the pocket itself is a sandwiched piece of contrast lining with interfacing to kind of make it, make it sturdy because you're holding the needles in there. Uh, so I was going to do that on the outside and then just put this, this color on the inside because you're not really seeing inside the pocket. But maybe I'll just go to Joann's and uh, pick up a whole different color. Uh, similar theme though, it's going to probably, I don't know, gold might look nice, like if I found like a tan or something that was more, or green, I don't know. So, you know me, I like to go to Joann's, so, and I do have a gift card, so, um, we shall see. This depends on when I decide to start. If I want to start the project, which I don't today, then we'll see. But if I have a hankering to start the project and I haven't been to the store, then I'll just use what I got. So, cool. um, so yeah, that's on the sewing horizon. So extra craft there. Let's see. Stash. Okay, so it was Christmas. So I did get some stuff for Christmas. I got some extra Christmas money that I spent. And I also ordered some yarn prior to Christmas for my present. So I have kind of a lot to show off. So I will try to do this relatively quickly. So basically I ordered a giant box of yarn from Knit Picks. And I have, I have, I guess, uh, technically I have a list of things I want to make for 2019, but most of it's using this yarn. I bought this yarn with purpose, so I guess I will kind of show off what I bought and what I'm going to use it for at the same time. And then there's a couple extra ones in here that I don't have the yarn, but I'll make sure. I... So, uh, let's see. Of course, I don't have these in any kind of order, so... Oh, and I didn't print out that one, did I? Okay. Um... Okay, whatever. Let's roll with it here. Maybe I'll go... Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'll just show off the patterns later and talk about it. So, whatever. We're going to show the yarn. So first off, so it's knit picks, so I had to get Felici. So I got some Felici in 8-bit colorway. So it's like green and black. It's supposed to be like old school gaming colors. Ooh, are we showing? Are we focusing? No, we're not. Are we too close? Uh, my battery's getting low. Hopefully it's not going to die. Uh, I bought, I already have some of this, but I bought more of it because I'm thinking I'd like to make hubby a pair of socks in this. Uh, this is the Baker Street Felici. Mm. My camera's a little far away today, so. so. I got two more skeins of Baker Street. Let's see if this works. Will we switch this? Nope. <laughs> oh, maybe it did. So this is the harvest color, and this one I just, I love fall colors. This is like a sunset, almost like sunset, but I got two of each of these. I'm just showing one. Oh, and then when I cut open the box to get the yarn out, I accidentally cut into the yarn. So this is a leftover of Baker Street that I had to um, pull off the top because I accidentally cut it off. Not a big deal, but kind of annoying. <laughs> so, um, is that all the fluffy? Okay. I think that's all the Felici. That was one, two, three colors. Uh, and then I bought a sweater quantity of the picture. I really, I really want to do a fingering weight sweater. And I think, I don't know if I printed that one out. I don't know. I don't think I did. I probably printed some of these out. Um, yeah. No, okay, no. But it's a pattern called Antler, I think. And I might change my mind, actually. I bought that pattern. I did like it. And it's a two-tone pattern, which I was just going to do all one color. 
Um, but it looked like a decent fingering pattern, pretty basic. Um, but I bought this. So this is Nipex Stroll in Pansy. So I got four of them. Me and the purple, I know. But I don't know why I keep buying purple. So, but I like it. It's pretty. Nice total for irrigated-ish purple. Uh, and then I got a sweater quantity of Bravo Worsted. I do like how the flax knit up in the Bravo Worsted. I really, I like easy care. I like inexpensive. So this is why. As much as I'd love to knit a $100 sweater out of, you know, indie dyed or something a little more fancy, I just, I just can't. <laughs> Instead, I bought enough yarn to knit like five sweaters <laughs> instead of just one. So this is the Bravo Worsted. I got seven skeins, which I think I only used for the uh, maybe even four and a half for the flax so I got plenty of yarn I can maybe make one of them tunic length but this is going to be um, the Booth Bay by Hannah Fettig uh, I don't have a picture of it if I remember I will put a picture of it in there even though it may be like the antler too so let's see how much I can get my act together but this is the Dove, he Dove Heather color so just and the Booth Bay is like a cardigan it's like a cocoon cardigan. Makes it. This is gray, <laughs> so I'm just gonna fall off my lap here. I mean, I'm usually a little more organized, but maybe, maybe not. Hello, camera. It's gray. <laughs> you can tell what color it is. It's a blurry gray. Now I'm making a mess everywhere. Um. So then I got. Another sweater quantity of Bravo Worsted in the Peacock colorway. And I know what I'm making with this one, and I have a picture of this one. And if you don't live on a rock, you probably know this one anyways. But I want to make the Weekender sweater by Renee Knits. Um, let's see if there's an... This just looks like a fun pattern. And who doesn't like uh, Drea Renee? Uh, nope, not a really good picture. That's the best picture, but... Uh, it's kind of a, just a more <sighs> drapey, oversized sweater. Let's see if I get that picture better. <clears throat> uh, and yeah, I like this color. I, I bought this color without a, a pattern in mind, but then I found that pattern and uh, thought, why not? Mm, so this one's like a teal colored. Not purple. So, <clears throat> that was the only purple I bought. But I have a sweater quantity of purple already in brown worsted. And then this one, I guess this one's kind of purpley. Pinky purple. This one is another brown worsted in the seraphim color. It's like a pinkish purple. I usually don't, oh gosh, I usually don't do the lighter colors, but I, the, the pattern that this one's for has like lace on the sleeves and I thought with the lace that a lighter color would show it off better. So that one is going to be the the Langlade, which I don't think I have a picture of this one because, oh yeah there's the Langlade, Lang, Langlade, can't say it. Uh, I think this one's Melissa Sashori. This was in the Plum Dandy Knits book. Uh, I actually rented, I borrowed it from the library, but that is a just beautiful lace down the sleeves. It's kind of a, yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> I saw it, I pretty much everything in this book I loved. So I saw this in the book and I loved it. Um, looks like, uh, it doesn't, it's definitely a scoop neck. Oh, here we go. Yep, it's like a scoop neck. Get some better pictures. You can get this on Ravelry. But this is going to be my Rhinebeck sweater. So Sarah the Canadian Knitter and Mandy Pinecone. I know for sure we're making it. I don't know if Brandy Miller was going to make it too. So and we're all, will we all? I don't know how long it recorded, but it stopped. So maybe I hit my limit. I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, we will all be at Rhinebeck this year and hopefully all wearing our Lang Lang sweater. So I'm not in any rush to cast that on, but I do want to cast it on because it's pretty. So. Um, and then my last sweater quantity is Bravo Bulky, so a bulky weight sweater, in the 
wine colorway. So this is a dark burgundy. The color's pretty good there. So I got nine skeins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight skeins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hopefully that's enough. Should be enough. I tried to overbuy a little bit, like one an extra skein, so. And that one is going to be the Keen sweater, also from the Plum Dandy Knits. I don't, I don't know if this is from uh, Melissa Shasori or why am I, Alicia Plummer. I want to say this might be Alicia Plummer. <coughs> but this is a bulky kind of uh, turtleneck sweater, and I just thought it was pretty. And so there's that. Very simple, but gorgeous and actually in the uh, Ravelry page in the project someone did knit it out of the same color and the same yarn so it was nice. And I'm pretty sure I bought enough yarn because I think she made a larger size and I had about the same. Um, <clears throat> so yeah that is all the yarn I bought. But wait there's more stuff. So I was going through my needle collection. I'm going to purge one of my sets of uh, my interchangeables. I have two Knit Picks interchangeable sets that I've had for a long time, but I never use the bamboo one because, or the wooden one. It's the Caspian, which is pretty. I only bought it because it was pretty. I really don't like wooden needles that much though. I really like metal needles. So I'll keep my nickel options needles, even though I don't use them very much because I have my child goose set now, which I adore. I just, I love them. So I decided to upgrade my double pointed needle collection, hence why I need to sew a double pointed needle cozy um but I, all my double point needles I, either i don't have certain sizes which i'm going to need for some of these sweaters or they're all the bamboo ones the clover from joanne's i uh, i'll keep them probably i'll keep them around it'd be good to have multiples and um but i decided to go ahead and just use some christmas money and get uh, set some chowgu double points so i got pretty much all the sizes uh, four, three through 11. I think that, that's, I got them from Hans Handsome Fibers. Oh my gosh, if you've never shopped at handsomefibers.com, you really should because they have coupons for everything. So literally, if you go to their coupons, it's like you get 10% off everything. You get 15% off over so much. You get 20% off over $100 or something. I don't know, whatever it is, but it's like amazing deal. So I got the maximum price discount and literally they i don't even know how i don't even know how this happened because it shipped out i ordered it on a friday i think and i got the ups label or maybe it was like a thursday and they sent me the shipping tracking like within an hour and i got it like on a saturday like i don't even know how it traveled in the mail that quickly because it was the mail it was the usps so i, I was amazed how fast their service was and I've ordered them, uh, that's where I ordered my interchangeable set from, and, and again, just amazing service. So, handsome fibers, definitely recommend it. Um, so yeah, so now I got all my double pointed needles. Uh, I'm a little back, back store or storage, put away my wood ones probably in storage or somewhere. I'll just save them just in case I need them. Um, but I need to get a cozy for these because they're just gonna get, get everywhere. Um, and then, oh, I forgot to show those off. See, I got this for the White Elephant um, exchange for my family's Christmas party. Someone else opened it, one of my uh, my cousin's girlfriend. Uh, and then she's like, wow, you can have this because I'm not going to use it. So it is a, it's more for the kids, but it's a little loom set. I haven't opened it yet, but it's a little wooden loom, wooden loom creation kit. And it looks like they made a pair of gloves on there. It's got some weird like nylon cord to use, but I'm pretty sure I can uh, figure out how to use, uh, how to make some things with that. But yeah, it looks cool. It's just like a little loom set. So I'll play with it. I'll give it to Emily to play with, but it's a little bit of weeding there. Um, <clears throat> and then does my phone go there it is i'm like surrounded by yarn and stuff okay uh stash so we did the loom we did the felici we did the blah 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 okay so the last thing i got which was kind of 
uh, kind of a splurge, kind of a whim, kind of a Jim got a decent Christmas bonus kind of thing. Um, I, we both decided to buy ourselves kind of a bigger Christmas present, I guess. I mean, I already ordered the yarn, but you know, that one actually, to be honest, even with all that yarn, it really wasn't that expensive. So I got myself a Cricut Maker. So if you are familiar with the Cricuts, they are vinyl cutters, uh, paper cutters, whatever. They cut out patterns. Uh, this one cuts out fabric, which I'm pretty excited about. Unfortunately, being that I was sick, I didn't get to play with it as much as I'd like. Let me see if I can turn. And I'm not going to keep it where it is, but it's right here. So uh, I got the gold, rose gold or the pink, of course. So. So yeah, so you put your uh, you have your cutter here, and it's got an extra thing where it holds like a fabric pen for writing on fabric. So a regular pen, you can have it write. Um, it works wirelessly, so I don't have to have it plugged into by the computer. Um, so I was probably gonna go downstairs. I really need to spruce up my area downstairs where all my fiber prep stuff is and my sewing machine is. I have my table down there. <coughs> Sorry, forgive me, I'm starting to lose my voice a little. Um, but for now, so I'm just sitting here. And it really it doesn't work there because it's got to shoot the stuff out the back. So it's too close to the wall. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to play around with it. I, then I'm, I'm actually going to use it to uh, draw out all my lines for my TPN Cozy because that was one of the steps. You have to like measure out all these spaces. So I already actually designed the layout in the Cricut Design Space. So all I have to do is put in the fabric and it'll cut the piece and draw all my lines on it. So then we're going to take it to the sewing machine and just got to sew all the lines to separate all the pockets. And then I will, uh, I have vinyl being sh delivered Friday, I think. I ordered a bunch of uh, heat transfer vinyl for like shirts and stuff, but I'll use that to put the numbers on it so I don't have to like hand, st or have the machine stitch the weird numbers on there. I'll put, I'll make little cute uh, vinyl numbers, maybe glitter, glittery, I don't know. I don't know if glittery goes with Zelda, but anyway, so I'll put the numbers with vinyl, iron them on. Um, I also got some uh, just adhesive vinyl. Oh, I did. Uh, if I remember, I probably won't, I'll try to remember to put in picture of my, my first project I cut. So I cut a little decal for the back of my car because I still have leftover vinyl from the cat lady sticker I made for the back of my car, which I made at the library because I have a Cricut. So that was my first experience using a Cricut was at the library, which uh, it, was, it worked just fine, but the materials were used for sure um <clears throat> but i made uh another decal for the back of my car since i had the vinyl uh it's a little um michigan cut out with a little heart so i know cheesy but so that's on the back of my car so i'll put that picture in and uh i also have some leftover vinyl in like yellow that i made my cat lady shirt <laughs> which i haven't worn in a while i should put that on again um but i'm gonna get some more just standard vinyl for sticking on the things and then some heat transfer vinyl to make the shirts and stuff. Uh, and then I thought for next year I'd like to make the little boxes for my minis. So I played around with two, drawing out some templates. So I have like Photoshop and stuff on my computer so it's pretty easy for me to take a picture on off the, off the internet and kind of try to trace it and manipulate and stuff. Because you can purchase patterns and stuff on, on the Cricut Design Space but I don't want to purchase stuff. I just buy your machine. I don't want to buy everything. So this was the first box I made. Oh. Um, but this one required me to tape it closed. Um, and I was kind of trying to think of something that would be self-closing. So then I, there's this one, but it is pretty fragile just because it's so small. But this one had little tabs. Where's the top? Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> so this one's just got to, oh, and also there's a scoring tool that I need to pick up that, uh, the, for, that fits the Cricut. It's like a scoring pen that you stick in and then it'll actually score the lines where you fold. This one, I don't have it, so I had to hand fold it. But, you know, if you look when you hand fold it, I think it's kind of crinkly. Oh, my battery's going low. Okay, we got to hurry up. <laughs> Um, so anyways, this is the self-sealing box, so, but, uh, I'd like to make, but you can see where it's, like, flimsy right there, because it's such a small, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's such a small cut. Um, but this one was cute. 
there's other boxes I'm sure I can find templates for, but for next year, for Advent, if I had my little boxes, I could put my little mini in there and then have my own little box and set them up with the numbers on them and display them and stuff. So, um, so those were the only two things I've got to make with my Cricut, my boxes and my decal, because I was sick. Um, and, yeah, and another thing I got for Christmas, boy, I hate the, I hate this being like such a show and tell, but this was kind of a cool thing to show off. But I got a GoPro camera from, uh, well, Jim and I got a GoPro camera from his parents. So, which it's awesome, but I, you know, I'm not like a trail rider or anything, so I'm not sure what we're going to do with it exactly, but I'll definitely take it to Rhinebeck next year and any other festivals or any other fun trips we go, we'll take that around. I think it's waterproof. I could technically take this like to the water park and stuff. I don't know if I'd want to or not though. Um, well, let me wrap this up. All right, so I showed off some of the patterns. Maybe I'll talk more about my patterns next week that I want to do. Christmas was fun. Kids had a good time, except we were just all sick. Everyone was sick. So pretty much from the day after Christmas through now, everyone's been sick except for David. He was fine. Um, I got my hair cut yesterday, so I'll just kind of brought up the back a little bit, but I like it. Um, I'm trying to kind of grow out my hair. I'm not really sure what my plan is, but that was it. But I mean, Christmas and New Year's was fun. I mean, we just, uh, we kind of just laid low. We did the family stuff for the Christmas day and New Year's we stayed home and stayed up late and watched the Disney fireworks live stream. So that was fun. Um... Um, yeah, that's about it. So last thing if I have time to talk about before my fa my phone runs out is, or my camera, my phone, my uh, camera brain is my nails. So, you know, usually you guys see my nails when I'm holding up my yarn. I gotta look. So this is my new nails today. I didn't get to really show off my Christmas nails because I just took them off yesterday. But if you see on Instagram, you'll see what I had. But uh, let's see if I... They'll show up better. But, uh, come on, you can do it. I think that worked. So these are color straight nails, which are basically these nail strip polish strips that you stick on your uh, stick on your nails. So they come in a pack of sixteen, double ended. Um, so here's the ones I just put on today. So they come in this little sealed packet of these little strips and uh, just peel one off you put one on cut it on cut it or rip it off and then put it on the other nail so you have two sides uh, so you have enough strips to make for two for me I have enough strips for two manicures uh, you can put them on your toes too or you can just put one strip per nail and not do the half and half but I like to uh, save so then I seal this up back up with a uh, flat iron to keep them sealed because they are nail polished they will dry out but they're completely dry and they're not tacky or anything. Oh, they're little, and they're sticky, but you know, you stick it on, stick it on, then you kind of file it off. Um, but these ones I find do not destroy my nails. Like I took them off yesterday. I let my nails kind of rest for the day. Hey, you know, they're a little, you know, uh, damn it, not damaged, but I don't know. They're a little, they're still strong. They're not like soft. Like when I take off my Jamberry vinyl nails or if I do gel nails, and my nails are like soft and just destroyed so these ones I actually can wear and my my nails aren't like completely destroyed um, and I found that if you put on the clear coat they last a lot longer so they sell like a pack of clear coat which you get 32 strips I think or yeah you get double the amount so so it's a you know they <clears throat> you're not spending the same amount of money for uh, clear as you would be like a glitter or a pattern um, you have to order them online uh, I'll put a link into my consultant. She's also a fiber fiber uh, enthusiast. So I met. She used to do a podcast, Den Knits. Um, she has an Etsy shop where she sells like bats of fiber and stuff. So and she's local, some Michigan. She's not really local, but she's in Michigan. So yeah, it's uh, I've really liked these, and I bought a few of those uh, for Chris just to have for Christmas. And these are kind of my wintry wintry nails. So I just put those on today. Um, but I really like those better than, I really love the Jamberry, like I love the patterns and the fun stuff they have, but I just, I just ruin my nails. And the application is a little bit slower. Um, these go on pretty fast. So that's it. I think I covered it all. 
again, I'm sorry I'm so loopy today. I'll show off some more, talk about more, some more uh, things I want to do in 2019, like patterns and stuff. We'll get my act together maybe next week. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll have some more work done on gym socks, some more spinning started, and yeah, maybe a sweater cast on, who knows. So thanks for uh, tuning in and thanks for watching and I hope you liked what you see. Please like and subscribe and come back and watch me next week. Follow me on Instagram as the Cat Lady, Facebook group, Ravelry, everything. So thanks again. I hope you guys get to craft all the things. Bye.